Hello everyone. This is a video of um, a pre-purchased scene which I've copied on my uh, photocopier and blown up to a bigger because it was like the size of a thumbprint. So I'm going to create this scene. It should be hanging downwards but I've decided to turn it the other way to give it sort of this swamp-like effect for my fairy to be in. So here I am using Lavinia stamps uh, again. Uh, Versifying Claire inks and um, my imagination. Um, in my mind's eye, um, I want this fairy hovering over the pond at the bottom of the garden. Um, with a tree branch where she's looking down into the pool. Well that's it in theory. Let's have a look. Sometimes when you press the stamp on it doesn't always make contact with the paper and I just use a, a, a brush and go back in using the ink off the ink pad and uh, fill in the bits where I feel it should be more black and the um, the pressure applied hasn't put enough on for it to adhere to the paper or card which is great nothing to worry about it's the same ink it'll be the same colour it's just applied with a brush Here we are inking up the pods, which will give it some sort of magical feeling down there. They're like the poppy um, seed pods with a bit of a twist. It's quite busy paper already, so you've kind of got to be careful where you place things and think about your composition before you do it. Sometimes it goes to plan and sometimes it goes straight in the bin. I seem to have them more so than uh, they go on a card. But we're living and we're learning and that's all that matters. I'm now in my happy space so I don't mind what's happening outside my front door. Here I just want part of the pods showing, not the full length of them. So just let your stamp stamp onto a bit of paper at the bottom. So you just get the heads. I hope everybody else's craft tables as bad as mine. And this is just one of two. You don't want to see the other. Right, thinking where I'm going to go next with this. Like I say, it's busy already, but you want to sort of create this magical feeling when you're looking into the picture. So just seeing if I can improve the composition with all the the ivies and the uh, the hanging effect I want from the top of the picture. Words are always good to fill in a block if you don't want to actually put a plant in there. So these are some sort of magical words, a little poem. Great stamp, great definition by Lavinia again. A 
apply your pressure and leave it for a few minutes to actually soak into the paper. I usually work on 300 GSM watercolour paper and it will take quite a lot. Um, but having said that, these Versify and Claire inks, they're quite juicy pads. So um, they do carry a lot of moisture on them when you um, dab them onto your plates. Try and error, like most things. Here I'm thinking about putting a bit of ivy in there, something to drop from the top. You don't have to fill in every gap that you see, but you know how you think to yourself something's missing and it needs something? Well, that's the stage I'm at. And in this paper card I've got blues and violets and pinks and greens. So I thought about popping some ivy on. You can always stamp off, stamp on, and it will give like a shadowing effect. If that's what you want. You might want the full amount that I've clearly realised I don't want that. And I'm going to wipe it off with a baby wipe and clean the stamp up. Best to do this straight away, otherwise it's it does stain your stamps. Um, I'm not saying it doesn't. But I try to keep them in some form of order um, because they're not cheap, but they give me a lot of pleasure. So I try and look after my things. Hmm. Clearly I'm having a ponder on this as to... Um... Oh, I'm going to go back with a black. Okay. Lovely stamp this, quite a lot of detail in the ivy. Gives that nice feeling that you're looking through a swamp and um, you want to move the ivy out of the way to get a better picture. It sort of gives you that feeling when you drop it on. And they don't all have to be at the same eye height and that, the same angle. You can twist it, shorten it, lengthen it. Let's face it, ivy drapes over all tree branches and forests in most formats on the ground from trees. It's working with what you have. And if you haven't got it, then you work round it. Do you see the ghosting? Like it's in the distance and pushing it away. Quite a nice eerie effect. So stamp off, stamp on. It sort of gives this 3D effect. You just want to check your stamps that you haven't got a little bit of ink on the edges. That will come out onto your paperwork and artwork and then you've got to try and disguise that. Usually not a problem. I don't think I've ever chucked a piece away that was totally uh, unsavable. But I make mistakes too. So here I'm going to put the moon into the picture now. I usually like it behind the fairies. So it gives a focal point to the fairy and makes you look at that. 
So a sponge, some VersaFine ink, one of the colours that's actually in the picture and literally dab it on and take it off completely and then just gently go around the acetate brushing away into the picture rather than pulling towards the acetate and it'll never it, it, it'll give you a, a better line when you pull the acetate away for a halo effect rather than a big block and again giving you this sort of mysterious sense See what I mean? You can always go back and touch up, but once you've moved the acetate, um, it's hard to get back in position. So here I am with my silver roller ball pen. And I'm going to highlight little areas like on the leaves where the moon would catch the leaves around the edge of the moon and on my little pods there. Just to lift it a bit and give it a bit of a shimmer when if you create this as a card it um, twinkles as the light catches it wherever it's positioned in the home be it a picture or a greeting card I'm slowly getting there as you can see it's quite a big piece this but it's lovely to work on because you slowly start to see what's in your mind's eye coming together don't forget also if you put the acetate on um, and continue the halo in front and over the top of the fairy she won't look like the moon's behind her it'll be as if she's in front uh, standing behind it but not in, in front of it if that sort of makes sense so it's stop when you get to an object and then move move around it and start again you know I stopped at her knees there and then came back up the other side to give the effect the moon was sat behind her. I hope that makes sense. Here I'm going to probably try and pull the whole thing together by edging the card, um, by just rolling the sponge along the edges to draw the eye in and make you look down the card through it into the middle rather than, oh, I've got a card, I'm going to look all the way around it. It's making you look at a focal point and then your eye will start to search and go round. It's just a nice way of sort of bringing it all together. And less is more really, you don't want a lot on your sponge doing this unless you're clearly hiding um, a mark you've made with your fingers or a block and we all do it. I've le learnt new swear words doing it so don't worry you can join my club. Can you see what I mean? It's like you're looking into the middle part now the sides are a blur. I'm just going to put some twinkles in her wings now. So this is a silver roller ball pen. But you can fill in some little parts of her wings to make them shimmer. And when it catches the light it's lovely. It's hard to show on the camera with shimmering parts of cards they become quite glare but it's not it's very subtle and some in her hair you could go on for hours just 
finding more and more pieces to do. But there's a point where you have to say, that's enough. I hope you like it. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. I enjoyed creating it. Till next time.